Mitchell's vision, picture of critical thinking, seems to me to be comprehensive, encompass the whole, and have these parts detailed, connected within the whole. So, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you uh, Richard Paul, uh, one of the great originators of critical thinking. Oh, good morning. Good morning. And thank you, Gerald, for uh, as usual, overly generous introduction. Something that I don't expect to live up to, but uh, I'm happy that he thinks the way he does. <laughs> uh, my remarks center this morning on critical thinking in every domain of knowledge and belief. And my subtext, if there is one, is something like this. Intellectual work, properly conceived, consists of and takes us in the direction of revolutionary change. Critical thinking generalized in the world would produce a very different world. And it's a world which increasingly is not only in our interest, but is necessary to us for our survival. But what is critical thinking? There are many ways to initially define it. Sometimes I've thought of it as it's a system for opening every system that exists. It opens up physics, it opens up chemistry, it opens up sports like tennis and basketball. It opens up professional practice. It opens up ethics. It enab enables us to see through ideology. It enables us to put things in intellectual perspective. The system opens us one way to think about critical thinking. Here's another way. Critical thinking is thinking that analyzes thought, that assesses thought, and that transforms thought for the better. Here's the third way to think about critical thinking, related and overlapping with the other two. It's thinking about thinking while thinking in order to think better. Everybody thinks, we have no choice about that. But not everybody thinks about their thinking. And not everyone who thinks about their thinking thinks about it well. You can worry about your thinking. You can think badly of your thinking. You can be embarrassed by your thinking. And so you can focus on it in dysfunctional ways that's not critical thinking. This morning, let's think about it as a way of thinking that enables the thinker to think regularly at a higher level than most people are capable of thinking. In other words, thinking transforms, critical thinking transforms your thinking in two directions. You think more systematically as a result and you think more comprehensively as a result. And in thinking more comprehensively, you think at a higher level. Not because you're at a higher level as a person, but because you're able to put thinking into the background and see it in a large and comprehensive way. For example, to, to discover the extent to which your thinking is bound by a culture. Cultures are good things in many ways, but to the extent that they lock us in to one way of looking at the world, we need to transcend them. We need to think beyond them. Why is this important? It's important because we as creatures are deeply determined in our life, in our behavior, in our character, and in other ways 
determined by our thinking. We have no choice but to be governed by thought. The question is, do we govern the thought? Ideas control us, do we control them? And reversing the process so that we're in the driver's seat, so that we're doing the thinking we need to do, and doing it as well as we can, is what the critical thinking is about. Our future as a species is dependent on whether we can develop the wherewithal to raise our collective thinking <coughs> across our societies and across the world. The task before us collectively is a Herculean one, that of developing critical societies. The idea of a critical society dates back many hundreds of years but it was very pointedly called for in 1906 by William Graham Sumner, the great anthropologist, who pointed out in his seminal book, Folkways, who pointed out in that book that if a critical society existed, that is a society in which critical thinking was a major social value, if such a society emerged, he said, it would transform every dimension of life and practice. And we are far from such a society, but we need to think about it. It needs to be part of our vision.